Uh, why'd you try to keep us from finding this out? Well, it's hard to explain this to a young person, but people of my generation are, you know... Racist. That's it! Go black man, go black man, go black man, go black man, he's strong as bricks, love all he come with, you can't stop it, black man magic. When newer Simpsons episodes aren't off having at least one extremely impressive piece of character acting in every episode, they're giving new depth to some random unexpected side characters. The police department needs someone inside the school! Or doing parodies of The Wire. Which, if you're black, is the only show your uncle has seen. I'm a hair look, Sam. You look good, Gib. Ah, oh, shit, she don't blink Nikki Deuce. Oh, please, please, that's, that's not... Carl Carlson, one of Homer's best friends, is one of the many side characters that was given highlight stories in recent years, but I swear, I haven't been able to stop thinking about his since it aired. Because before this, right, I can only think of one standout episode about Carl, and it was literally 10 years ago. What do we actually know about Carl, like, really? And what does this new episode tell us about the past and future of his character? In other words, who the fuck is this nigga? So I wanted to take time out of my busy schedule of watching the Powerpuff Girls movie Whisper of the Heart and Shampoo all in one day with the chaser of Brother Bear in the morning to figure out who exactly Carl Carlson is and what The Simpsons tries to tell us about his identity as a black man over the course of 34 years. Spoiler alert though, gang, <laughs> it, uh, it, it ain't a lot. Get ready for the worst color there is. No offense to Carl. I get it all the time. This is Carl the Simpsons and Black Identity. Or the evolution of Carl's blackness. Or something else, I don't know. Gotta, gotta leave room for a title change in case this shit flops. Ah, boy, this man doing everything but Daria. Ah, oh, word. That's not what your moms was talking about though when I was Lies, they telling lies, we promise I won't We've been patronized, they taking lives I'm on my way home, relax my mind About half the time I'm watching cartoons For knocks how I'm locked in my home Of course they resemble my skin when I watch too Hypnotizing, tannic, how I follow through the vibes Okay, Dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through his penny size, on a man of the house like Oscar Slide. You deceive, I believe you to Oscar James Earl, when I speak, I'm a fossa Gotta swerve in the streets, never block us I go, feel more, just try to make you feel more Through the halls, I felt scorns Looking at me, cause I don't like what you like You feel torn, so this Smack your lights, slick back, you ain't seen pimpin' before For the stars I shoot pimpin', no boy, you best check the score Excuse me, uh, we're looking for our friend, he's, uh, uh he's about so tall Uh, wears a jacket, he's, um, got no visible tattoos Just say he's black, Mo You say he's black! <laughs> Carl Carlson is one of Homer Simpson's best friends. They're co-workers, they hit the bar together. He's the black one, it even says that on the Simpsons wiki. There's a reason why they had bro sitting next to Cleveland in the crossover. You know why they got us sitting next to each other. Uh, cause we're the two funniest guys in our towns? Damn right. I really miss my nigga. I really miss my nigga. If this nigga got a spinoff, it'd just be the Carmichael show. Yeah, listen to this early Carl voice. Things are gonna pick up once the entertainment gets here. Ooh, entertainment. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Boy, fuck you. You ever notice how we know marginally more about Lenny than we do about Carl, despite these two characters being so tied together? Lenny has so many classic solo moments. Or at least moments without Carl. He's got dental plan. He gets to yell at the aliens for spreading love. His dirty ass house. Please don't tell anyone how I live. <laughs> he gets punched in the back of the head by Homer. Let me got his. But what are the Carl moments, right? And to operate on hard mode, what are the Carl moments that are not tied to his relationship with Lenny? The show always acted as if they were like a package deal, but it is not as hard to think of moments of Lenny without Carl as much as it is to think of the other way around. <laughs> Look at me and Johnny. Go ahead, cartoons that curse. There's the odd Carl is black joke, right? That they don't even do that often. It's almost like they're scared to acknowledge that he's black sometimes. Here's one that I had to ask Twitter for. Do you know heavyweight champ Dredrick Tatum? What, you think just because I'm black I know all other black people? 
Well, I... Uh, uh, Actually, Dredderick and I are very good friends. Hey, we met through Dr. Hibbert at a party at Bleeding Gums Murphy's house. Woo! You the man, Carl! I believe you can fly! Boy, I am so sick of everyone assuming I'm good at basketball because I'm African-American. Hey, Simpsons. That's Lanny. Oh, I wanted the black one. And I could give the brothers the black power salute. Black power! Black power! Was that Al Roca? His exuberance is perplexing. I know this is the bare minimum, but quick side note. Shout out to the Simpsons for understanding that there is more than one shade of black. This is supposed to be Chris Brown. There is only one Best of Carl compilation on YouTube, and this shit was posted four years ago. This show has run for 34 years, and this shit is five minutes long. <laughs> Look how fucking long the Lenny one is. Hey, yeah, this nigga a feature? He's not a fucking rapper. But I'm not a rapper. How does a character that's so weaving into the show's history and DNA, one of the best friends of its main character, be around for 30 years, and not only do we not know much about him, I don't think anybody ever noticed or cared. Like, I know I didn't. The 529th episode of The Simpsons is titled The Saga of Carl. And for the very first time, it tries to give us a story about who Carl is. Homer, Moe, Lenny, and Carl all win the lottery together. But Carl dips off when it's time to split all the money. The guys, while struggling to figure out where Carl could be, they try to stay optimistic. He's our friend. He had to have a good reason to disappear with our money. But they make it a point too to establish through Marge that the guys never really thought about their friendship with Carl. They never considered the fact that when they link, they kind of just chill and do guy shit. They never really have real conversations. Come on, you know how dudes are. We don't go digging into the past. We talk about guy stuff. Maybe if you talked less about guy stuff, you'd know more about your so-called friend. Thanks, Mom. And I think that's clever because like I was saying, despite the random him and Lenny are in love with each other joke, we don't really know much about Carl. We know him just as much as the characters do, which is proven to be not much at all. This thought process follows them throughout the episode too. I really love this sequence of them reflecting on their friendship. Just the same shit every day without even saying a word. They find out that Carl took the bread and went home, way back home, back to his native country of Iceland where he was adopted. So they go down there too to try to find him. All right, this is it. Carl's family home, 22. Oh, that's a lot of letters. This is where the concept of Carl being adopted originates. Before this, it's so easy to assume that he was born in Springfield with an all-black family. I think this is an interesting angle to go with Carl's character. I remember when this came out being really fascinated that this is what they came up with for this character. I just have one problem. It kind of doesn't fucking mean anything. Carl's daddy has like two lines and I don't even think his mama has a voice. We don't get to learn anything about Carl's parents, his childhood, their personalities. This episode is about Carl, but it's kind of not a Carl episode. We spend way more time with Homer, Lenny, and Mo. The driving force in the episode for Carl to steal the money is to find a document that would clear his family's name because apparently, they all fuck ups. This saga tells of how Carl Carlson's family were the watchmen of the coast, always keeping an eye out for invading hordes. Iceland's safety depended on their vigilance, but the Carlsons failed in their duty. The enemy invaded, laying waste to our lava fields, burning our sweaters, and feasting upon our tiny horses. I don't get it, he's adopted, why do they all look like Carl? <laughs> Not to be hard on the episode either, right? Because I do really, really like it. I think this bit is hilarious where they're trying to replace Carl. This could not be more offensive. Man! Oh, of course! Ugh. But this episode does not tell us much about Carl besides where he's from and that he was adopted. This episode does not add an extra layer to his personality, nor does it even give any insight into how he feels about his family. So I think that in all of those respects, this episode was a missed opportunity. Instead though, the episode chooses to focus on the friendship of these four guys. When they get to Iceland and Lenny is pleading relentlessly to get an answer out of Carl as to why he couldn't just talk to them, tell them why he needed the money. Carl just echoes a lot of the shit Marge says. I didn't tell you because we're not friends. Friends share their feelings, their hopes, their dreams. Friends know their friends are from Iceland. We are just guys who sit next to each other at a bar and talk about ugh, guy stuff. I think that the conclusion of this episode being the guys begging the town to forgive Carl's ancestors by explaining how good of a guy Carl is, is very wholesome. I like that a lot. Carl Carlson, who helped me move. 
even though I moved the week before. Yeah, and when we were painting my house, Carl Carlson brought that blue tape. You know, that makes you really look like you know what you're doing. And when he brings a six pack to my house, he doesn't take the extras home with him. Carl Carlson leaves them in the fridge. Carl Carlson is our friend, even if he doesn't believe it. A few of these moments could have gotten a little bit more time like they deserve. If they just cut that stupid fucking science museum thing in the opening. This was around the time where you can miss the first five minutes of a Simpsons episode and just and just not care. But I think this episode also shows the Simpsons priorities at the time. As a show made mainly by white people. You tell the story about a black man that was adopted and raised by white people and instead of unpacking his experience and how he feels, they choose to focus on his relationship with his white friends. I'm not saying that this is the direction that they had to go, but it's really interesting when you contrast this approach to how they came at the top of this year. With Carl... Carl... Car Carl... Carl Carson... What? Cop... Fuck. Carl Carlson rides again. <laughs> Did I mention that I hate this nigga's name? We don't get together to share our emotions. We get together to escape them. Yeah, I tell you guys I love you, but uh, I don't want to say it and you don't want to hear it. Turn nothing! Real quick, today's video is actually brought to you by Mantis Sleep. Mantis Sleep makes these really dope sleep masks along with other functional sleep accessories. They really believe in improving and optimizing sleep in order to create the best, most well-rested life possible for their customers. The one that they let me try out was the Mantis Sleep Sound. Which I was interested in just because I was just trying to figure out how it was gonna be sound coming out of that shit. You wrap it around your head and these little blue things, these are the headphones. And they're adjustable, they don't just uh they don't just assume that everyone's ears are in the exact same spot. And they make sure that you don't go too loud. It's like the perfect comfortable volume for when you want to take it down. No extra pressure on the eyes, 100 percent blackout, it's good money. But they have stuff for people that like eye pressure or just kind of want like near blackout. They got these cool masks that cool your eyes. What? If you want to know why I haven't done any videos lately, it's because I sheepy. But with Manta, I was able to get my first good night's sleep in a while. Now I can hopefully be funny again, maybe. <laughs> Check out Manta Sleep using my link in the description. And make sure to use code Tariq for 10% off your order. That's T-A-R-I-Q for 10% off with Manta Sleep. <laughs> Carl, don't do this! You don't need to prove anything to me! No, I need to prove it to myself. Bull riding is in my blood. Oh, that is not how blood works! Call the puppy love, Curtis and Bush and the tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G On June 24th, 2020, Jenny Slate stepped down from her role as Missy in Big Mouth, following the Black Lives Matters protests at the time. Two days later, both The Simpsons and Family Guy followed suit and vowed to never cast a white person as a person of color in future episodes again, leading to the recasting of already existing black characters like Cleveland Brown, Dr. Hibbert, and Carl Carlson. Ever since the very top of season 32, Carl has been voiced by Alex Desaire, who we've seen on this channel before. I mean, well, some of y'all shit. Out of everybody that has had to come in and fill shoes of characters that we've known for years, I feel like Alex does the best job by a country mile. His Carl voice is so close to the original that it's not jarring and just different enough to where he can call it his own thing. We have to vote on Burns' new contract. It's basically the same deal, except we get a free keg of beer for our meat. I needed something to hold up my pants, so I immediately thought belt. 
The addition of a black man finally playing Carl is what I believe led to the invention of his own new Spotlight episode. Let's tell a black story with this black character that's now played by a black man. Something metatextual, not only just about Carl's identity, but how the writers have treated him in this show throughout the years. The 742nd episode of The Simpsons is titled Carl Carlson Rides Again, a story about Carl meeting a black woman at a bowling alley named Naima. Right off the bat, you gotta love how cute this little flirting is. So, Carl, you're good with wearing pre-stank rental shoes? I own these babies. Also, my work shoes, my Crocs, orthotic inserts, pretty much all my footwear, on them all. Ooh, fancy. You know, you're kind of sweet in a super chatty, shoe-splainy kind of way. If you want to know how I flirt with women, you feel me? Here you go. It's, it's just like this. There's something about you. About me? Uh-huh. Good or bad? <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. You let me know, though, right? Maybe the first to know. You let me know? Mm -hmm. You let me know? Yeah. You let me know? Sure. You let me know? Yeah. Good. I don't, uh... I don't do anything else any of the men in this movie do, though. Fuck that. Guys, I just met the one. The one person here willing to go out on a date with me. Okay, so now I think is as good a time as any to bring up something that I don't think I've ever seen anyone bring up before. Apparently, this nigga Carl has a wife? Wait, what the fuck? In Secrets of a Successful Marriage from Season 5, during Homer's marriage counseling class, Carl can be seen with this unnamed black woman. She whispers to him and even gets two lines. This is terrible. Oh. I guess he's run out of stories. Well, we're chatty today, aren't we? Uh, but Tariq, there were single people at that meeting too. That doesn't have to be his wife. Bitch, stop talking to your TV. Five years later in Sunday Cruddy Sunday, Carl says that he's going to give his Super Bowl ring to his wife. Like he did as his wife. I'll probably give it to my wife. It's our anniversary today. Ah! Then 15 years later in season 25, Carl calls her his girlfriend <laughs> while also Getting cheated on, I guess? The VP of personnel is doing my girlfriend. <laughs> I swear the Carl Rabbit Hole is on that shit is something serious because after that I found out <laughs> this nigga was cheating too. In season seven, Homer mentions a mistress. Where's Bonnie, Lenny, and Carl? Uh, they never come around anymore now that they got their mistresses. This nigga draw snitching, but alright. In season 25, Carl says he has his annual affair at some yearly convention. You only have an affair if you're married. <gasps> There's that woman I always have a same time next year affair with. And in the middle of this tangent about Carl's love life, let me detour, all right, to talk about how this adopted Icelandic man that has never known his biological family has a fucking sister. I only know it because apparently in season 22, we find out that him and Lenny have this sick ass Valentine's Day tradition of swapping sisters every year and going on a double date. Why does she sound like him? Is there anything better than my best friend's face on a girl body? Not that I can think of. Nothing better. <laughs> then in season 31, they hang out on a yacht and she's voiced by a black woman now. I feel the power. Same black woman that does the voice of Naima in this episode. She's like they Cree Summer now. With all of this information, I am led to believe that Carl was in a relationship with this woman, got married. He goes to the Super Bowl on their anniversary with the homies and brings her home a ring from a team that she probably doesn't even fucking like. She divorces him and then he's just a babbling mess of infidelities until meeting Naima in season 34. Thank you, man of a thousand thoughts for this theory that I never told you I was gonna use. <laughs> After Carl gets Naima to agree to go out with him, he instantly gets worried. She tells him about this restaurant her family owns on their side of town. <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> you see that? Oh, we can have dinner at this place I know because I own it. The Soul House. My nephew just made this commercial. There's a 14 minute version on his SoundCloud. It's really explicit. Carl starts to worry about his authenticity as a black man. Well, Naima, this woman with a Howard University sweatshirt that runs a soul food joint on the black side of town, really be interested in this corny, slouchy guy that doesn't know nearly as much about his own culture, to the point to where he doesn't even know that there is a black side of town. And since Carl has all white friends in his white side of town, he's hesitant on venting to them about what's going on because he doesn't feel like they'd understand. I'm confused about my racial identity. Uh, no, we're perfectly comfortable talking about race. I mean, I can talk about race all day. Oh, me personally, I don't even see 
Carl. What I appreciate about this scene is that it kind of adds up as to why the show barely even talks about Carl and his race. Whether it be the characters on the show or the people behind it. It's all because it makes the white people immediately uncomfortable. It's more comfortable to just see Carl as a guy instead of a black guy. Out of the fear of saying something wrong, offending him, offending the audience, whoever. Or whomever? I don't know, I never knew how that shit worked. Being adopted and raised by white folks from Iceland, I've always felt like an outsider. Not Icelandic enough, not black enough. Hey, sure, I'm barfly enough, but that's not enough. When I was a teenager and I saw that Carl episode from season 24, this is exactly the kind of stuff that that story made me think about. How tapped in is Carl to his culture if he's so far removed from it? Does he have anyone to connect to? Did this do something to his identity? How does he see himself? In order to quote unquote fix himself, Carl goes to a black barbershop, which is apparently where Bart gets his hair cut at. Makes sense though, just to cut that every 8th grader and Amazon worker got. Who knew there was so much ribbing at a black barbershop? His mama name Clay. Clay? I'm, I'm calling Clay. Clay. He goes to a black clothing store, tries on a bunch of fits. Damn, Mookie fucking Hector, my kid Mookie. And he literally asks the guy that works there, Can you make me look real? You know, authentic? In exchange for his gold belt buckle. It's the only thing that he has from his birth family. He gives it away because he feels like Naeem is worth it. When he gets there, they really lay it on thick that he doesn't know much about his culture. She asks this nigga about the Black Panthers, he throwing up the chatty bowls. She asks him about Huey P. Newton, he googling this nigga under the table despite literally having bro on his shirt. He calls the collard greens kale and when she corrects him, he calls the shits urban greens. Pardon me while I fucking vomit, my nigga. <laughs> Naima gives him the rundown, the history of her family in this restaurant. She has a legacy to look back on, to cherish, and to be proud of. And I love that contrast because it's clear that Carl never had anything like that. He doesn't know his bloodline and his Icelandic family was literally hated for being pussy. So they ain't nothing to be proud of, no way neither. I'm sorry. I'm new to all this. New to being black? Yes. I, I mean, no. I mean, I'm just trying to be more convincing at it. Oh, wow. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. Look, I like the guy that I met at the bowling alley, and I wanted to get to know him better. But I don't see how that's going to happen, because you don't know you. What I love about this is that even though this is very clearly stuff that Carl needs to unpack and work on, the only reason he's in this situation is all internal. He meets a woman that he felt like was quote unquote very black because of how she presents herself. And he just assumes that that's what she wants him to be without realizing that she already liked him for who he was. This is all because Carl lacked his sense of self already. It just took falling for Naima to bring it out. The journey isn't about Naima anymore, it's about Carl getting to the bottom of who he is. Carl gets the buckle back and meets Dr. Henry Louis Gates, African American professor and host of Finding Your Roots on PBS. Gates gives Carl this extremely detailed breakdown of his family, in a way that I don't even think I've ever seen in a cartoon at this point. We know that your fourth great grandfather was born into slavery on what would become the first Juneteenth in 1865. Ellis got word that the Emancipation Proclamation had freed the slaves two years earlier. He leapt onto the wildest stallion on the ranch and held on for dear life. Three days later, in two states over, that stallion was broken. But Ellis, who'd been born a slave, was not only free, now he was a cowboy. Folks don't always see us as cowboys, but when my boy wears his blue ribbon belly badge, he'll know bull riding's in his blood. I finally know who I am. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. This puts the battery in Carl's back and he goes bull riding, saying that it's in his blood. Oh, that, that is, is not, not how blood, blood works. works. He gets fucking wrecked. But they give him a really nice, wholesome final conversation with Naima, where he is relentlessly excited about cowboys. One in four cowboys who settled the Old West was black. <laughs> oh, and you know the Lone Ranger? No, I'm a young person. Well, he was based on a real guy, Warman Bass Reeves. It's been a couple months, so I feel like I can say this without any recency bias, but I think this might be one of my favorite episodes of the entire show. Not only is it really funny and grants new depth to an old character, but it's the kind of black story that I don't feel like is told that often, at least not in this way. I think a common thing that's talked about is how sometimes when a black person isn't too drenched in their culture, it creates resentment on both sides too. There's the black women don't understand my sense of humor. I can't date them, it's just a preference. And the, why are you talking like that? You sound white, why don't you have any black friends? And I mean, it's important to have these conversations, right? But that doesn't happen to everyone that feels distant from their culture. 
and not everyone is ostracized for it. Your understanding of your sense of self does not always include everyone else. Carl's journey about understanding who he is has nothing to do with how he feels about the black people around him, it is internal. Why does Carl think just because he doesn't do black things, he's not black? There's no black people around him to tell him this. Naima doesn't tell him that. They don't even give it to him at the barbershop. He told himself that. But regardless of if he knew who he was or not, if Naima knew who he was or not, he still fell for her and felt the exact same way about her when she comes back at the end of the episode. It seems small, but I really like that detail. A lesser show could have had Carl argue with Naima about his blackness, but instead, this inspires him to figure something out about himself that he never knew that we never knew. I love that too in comparison to the saga of Carl, they really let Carl drive this episode. We follow him everywhere, we feel all of his emotions, their top priority. The most focused Homer gets is this bit where he doesn't know how to support his friend. And Marge gives him this extremely honest piece of advice. Homer, I know you. You're never going to say the right thing. But that doesn't mean you should stop trying. Carl Carlson Rides Again gives us a Carl story that I never in my life thought I was going to see, but I love every single second of it. It's so refreshing to finally have an understanding of who this guy is, what he is like outside of the three or four characters that we always see him with. We never found out how Carl went up for adoption, what happened to his birth parents, or where they are, but we know how he feels now, and that's the important part. For the first time in 34 years, Carl felt real, he felt personal, and he felt human. Oh, and thanks for the old positive, by the way. So does this make me a cowboy too? That's not how blood works. Today's indie animation highlight is Hearts of Titan, a science fiction action comedy aimed directly at young adults and teenagers produced by Capricorn Studios. Hearts of Titan puts you in the mind of Teen Titans, Generator Rex, Ben 10, that specific brand of cartoons that we grew up with. And if you didn't grow up with any of those shows, stop watching my videos, you're five. And if you didn't grow up with any of those shows, think Rise of the TMNT, Monkey Kid, or Centaur World. It's about three Ivy League students, Elias, Damien, and Corey, who are gifted their scholarships by an unknown benefactor. Oh, they using words like benefactor. You already know this shit gonna go. This is all I got. Nobody expected for their scholarship to entail learning how to use fantastical technology, let alone meeting alien shapeshifters or the hunting down cybernetic criminals. But all this trouble just kind of seems to be a degree requirement. Oh, and there's, there's Ryan too. I like Ryan. Everything I've seen from this project has blown me away. Man, does this shit look good. I love these colors. I love this world. These designs are already relentlessly iconic. I'm kind of hating, I'm not gonna lie. The team behind Hearts of Titan is currently putting together a one minute proof of concept trailer, among other things, including the music video to show you just what to expect when it's crowdfunding time. You can support Hearts of Titan by following them on all of their socials, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. Um, Fuck, should it be like X now? Nah, that nigga Elon can suck my dick. And just spread the word about the show. Go to the website, check the crew out, that kind of thing. Everything will be down below. You are gonna wanna get behind it now because I promise you, the game is never gonna be the same after it drops. <laughs> I tried to do this video when Carl Carlson Rise Again first came out, I really did, but I didn't know how to express my thoughts. I just knew it made me feel this euphoric emotion, but I didn't know how to spit that onto an editing timeline. But after doing this video and sitting down with this character and his history, I now get that it was because I didn't even know who this guy was until that day. He didn't know who he was until that day. But now we know. So <laughs> to answer my own question at the very top of this video, Carl Carlson is one of Homer Simpson's best friends. They worked together, they hit the bar, he was an orphan left on a doorstep all the way in Iceland. Adopted, living in Springfield for years without even knowing who he was. He doesn't know his birth family. 
kinda, whatever. And his Icelandic family doesn't have the greatest reputation. Carl Carlson is funny, he's bright, he's kind, he's anxious, he's a fucking cowboy, and he's black. And I think I speak for every Black Simpsons fan when I say, find a fucking Lee. Hands free, eh? And I could give the brothers the Black Power salute. Black Power! Black Power! So good that they want to be like us. I'm going to tell the truth. They're going to want to fight us. I'm new to all this. New to being black? Just say he's black, bro. You say he's black. I'm confused about my racial identity. Damn, this place gentrified fast. Uh, I don't care about the color of your skin, Lenny. You're my friend. Look like the black is hot. You know what's coming next. Patty wagon in the cots. They want to say something. They'll put us it on the spot. so good to be black. What is we paid for the eight hours a day minimum wage? The government administers slaves on a grave shift. Try and get the fuck out my grave. Gotta work twice as hard cause a nigga is paid. You know, just designed and condition that way. My generation never planned on us living that way. <laughs> he was kind of, he was kind of irking. I ain't like the mega part. <laughs> I was on a get rich quick with my homie Scooter Between star troopers and hanging with Mr. Cooper We put money and hard work into our maneuvers uh, We gotta know that our superpowers are super uh, We drop gems directly to the consumer uh, So how the fuck we allow Jacob the jeweler uh, All across the world they call us niggas and shooters